Bodie, come here. Is that a dog or a cat? Oh, it's my dog. Oh, okay. I was going to say, if a cat comes to that, keep that cat. Oh, yeah. Jamie's still come, but Bodie, get over here. Come here. All right, cool. Zane, welcome to the Growth Now Movement, man. Thank you very much. Hold yeah. on, my dog wants to say hi. Bodie, get in here. Awesome. Come here. Come what, here. What kind of dog? Uh, you'll see. Come, over, come around the side so you can see how big you are. Oh, my gosh. He is <laughs> yeah. massive. Yeah. This is Bodie. He's an Irish wolfhound. That's amazing. Adorable. Okay. Okay. All right. Now skedaddle. Go bring, Go get a cat. Go bring a cat. Not in your mouth. Though. <laughs> Just not Pretty in your mouth. Me. Just ride, ride, ride yeah. your back like a horse. Yes, yeah, I exactly. probably could at this point. That dog is massive. <laughs> that, that is, is unreal. Guy. How How old is he? He's four. Awesome. He's four. My wife wanted a castle. I said I wasn't ready, so I'll get you the the dog befitting of one. So, there you- and but he he, he farts on castle like. Uh, <laughs> I imagine it's not the grandest smell in the world. We actually, I live in Reading, Pennsylvania, um, and we have a, a replica of a castle in Germany that a guy built for a woman. This is obviously a long time ago. Well, and as, she, as most castles were, by the way, yeah. And she rejected him, and he, and he hung himself. Not, so, in the, not in the castle. In the castle. Uh, and now it's like a restaurant, and apparently it's haunted and all these things. It's, it's an incredible place. But okay. All right, I'm writing that down and looking yeah. that up. <laughs> Learn, learning that we do not build castles for women. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just just absolutely unreal. But, you know, I'm, I'm excited about this conversation with you because you're somebody that I've kind of followed for a long time. Uh, and I was saying to you, you before we Are you excited on, because I've canceled seven times? <laughs> well, I wasn't going to bring that up so people didn't realize. <laughs> it wasn't. Um, yeah. For but, the, but, most of them weren't my fault, so I just put that out there. That, that's true. And, I mean, I've been canceled officially because somebody's been in a, nat- a national park, you said, yesterday? Something like that? No, I was in a state park, state park. shooting, shooting some, some video and stuff for my, my adventure uh, uh, clothing brand. And I didn't have a cell signal. I thought I could do it from there. I'm like, you guys, I'll, I'll be all right. I'm just going to break off here. I'd be sitting in a – you'd be having a national – or well, a state park in the background besides – uh, this, yeah. I thought it would work out. Didn't get a signal, so that one, you know, whatever. They've, they've all been my fault, but yesterday was a, nat- a natural disaster. Yeah, well, a, hey. A it, disaster. <laughs> it, it works out, and the first time, I think, with the wildfires in L.A., which delayed yeah, everything, right. and then that got pushed back. And so we're this is like we're we're in new territory at this point as far as why would anybody <laughs> cancel or reschedule on me? Yeah. You're taking the cake on all of them. <laughs> So uh, amazing. But so year, as I was saying before we got on the call, my brother-in-law years ago called me up and he's like, yo, next time you come down here, he's like, we got to watch a show. I'm obsessed with it. And that he's was from Philly. He sounds like he's from, he's from he, Philly. He's from South Jersey. So he's close. Okay, okay, yeah, South so, Jersey's Philly. Hell, it's all yeah, the same thing. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we literally binge watched the shit out of it on Saturday while getting drunk. And that was three sheets. Yeah. Uh, just a great concept for a show. Literally you travel the world and, and go through their drinking habits and, and stuff like that. And, and I imagine, is that kind of where you started uh, to kind of gain recognition? Yeah. Or? yeah. You know, it's funny. I'll tell you what, what happened with that. I, I went into an audition as I was auditioning back then. I guess maybe I was in early 30s, whatever. And, um, and you know, you just one audition after another. And, and this one, I went into this, this audition is for a show called You Should, you Should Open a Restaurant. Um, your, your, your friend, you're such a good chef or cook or whatever, your friend nominates you and they come and turn your house into a restaurant. And so they hire, um, you know, waiters and wait staff and all these kinds of, you know, like a, a, a sous chef and yeah. all these people, bartender or whatever. Did that show and, work? Well, here's the thing. They, they brought me in as the host. And then I was talking to them, and I was my big personality and whatever. And then they started laughing, like, "Yeah, you're not really what we're looking for for the host." I'm like, "Oh, okay, <laughs> whatever." And then like, "No, no, no, you understand? It's the host. It's the person who seats people. It was the host or hostess." Oh my gosh! Oh. Her manager read it wrong. <laughs> we weren't looking for someone to host the overall show. And so I was like, "All right." So I left, and then they, and then I was about to get in the elevator, and who knows if they wouldn't have caught me if they would have followed through with this. But they said, "Hey, look, we're doing a show called Three Sheets. We want you to do it." Like okay, these guys were from Seattle. When someone from LA says that, you just you're just like okay, yeah, right, because literally they said it to you. That happens every day. Um, and sure enough, they called me the next day. Then we shot a pilot three weeks later, and then the pilot got picked up three weeks after that, and then three weeks wow. after that, I was in Ireland shooting my first episode. So that's what happens when you're dealing with with less of a bureaucracy because you're they're in a Seattle based production company dealing with a a new startup. Um, uh, HD channel in New York at the time. This is like 2005. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and then and then we were off to the races, and then and then that network was canceled. Well, what, right as we started shooting season four, so we finished it. 
We're pretty sure that Travel Channel was going to pick it up. Um, they didn't. Fine Living picked it up. Um, and then I realized the reason why Travel didn't pick it up is because um, Mojo, the network, was se- selling a block of five shows, mm. three sheets plus four others. And most people just wanted three sheets. Yeah. So ended up on Fine Living Network. Fine Living Network went off the air. Travel Channel bought it. Um, God knows why. They aired it for five episodes, and then they sold it to Spike, which is just weird. Yeah. And then dur- during that time, my, my contract expired, and I, I um, called Mark Cuban, who I'd met, because he originally wanted the show for his network, but didn't want to get all five. What was and his network? HDNet. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. And then and that was like a guy's network. It was perfect. We, we shot, I said, let's do a domestic version of Three Sheets. He's like, yeah, let's do it. We did it. It was great. Called Drinking Made Easy. And then he ended up partnering with AEG uh, and Ryan Seacrest, of all people, and um, uh, and then turned it into a live music channel. And so Three Sheets didn't really have a home. Our Drinking Made Easy didn't really have a home there. So then I kickstarted uh, a show called Chug right. after, tra- after Travel Channel passed on it and then said they're not doing any drinking shows. I then kickstarted it, started shooting it, at which point... Uh, travel came out with Blue, Boost Traveler, and then I ended up uh, getting Chug and then selling that to the National Geographic Channel, and then from there sold to Netflix. There's my life. Yeah, so my life revolves around this show, which it does in many ways. Then that's my life in you know two minutes. Your your life revolves mm-hmm. around a show and drinking and yeah. traveling, and and it's a great concept because I think that's any man's dream at this point is to literally yeah. travel around the world and drink. <laughs> Uh, your face off, and and you. There are a couple epi- of episodes where you really get into it, and and it, they're very entertaining. Can you, can, can you name one? Um, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I won't put you on the spot unless yeah, yeah. you can come up with it. But I'll tell you that the one, the first time was in Prague, first episode of season two, where we, where we where I just had renewed my contract for three seasons, and I was like, all right, we're doing a show, whatever. I was really excited. We get to Prague, beautiful spring day. Uh, and then we went to place this place to drink. And I remember there was this thing on the wall. It was a devil. And if the devil had more than a, one tail or more than three tails, you knew that you were drunk and you should go home. And I remember looking at it going, I, I can't even tell how many tails it has. <laughs> like, all right, that was it. That was, that was the first time right there. That's awesome. And, and so I usually don't do a ton of research before I interview somebody. And it's funny because I, I feel like I already knew a little bit about you cause, because I watched the show. Um, but then I dove a little bit in because I realized you have all this depth and all these layers. You know, you're you're also an entrepreneur. Where a lot of times when people are show hosts, they don't really fall into the entrepreneurial realm. Um, and so when I was doing some research, I realized that I guess your original payoff for for the show was not very great. Like what you were making, like people probably thought you were killing. Yeah. It. Like oh, he's hosting oh, a television show. Thing? Oh yeah, 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 on yeah show. Sure. Yeah, yeah, unreal. Yeah, um, yeah that was that. <laughs> I was not allowed to disclose that, but I think it's so old. Who really cares? Yeah, I think I was getting paid twenty five hundred dollars an episode times eight episodes. So that's like around what around like around twenty grand yeah, plus like an twenty grand, yeah. and you know like taxes and whatever. It's like really, I ended up with about ten grand. Yeah, and I, I mean, maybe that wasn't even enough money for them to take taxes from. But um, but yeah, but you're on TV, and it's like you know they when I went to renew for season two, I think I maybe got five. Uh, and then, and then at the time I was done, I think I got 7,500, but if you think about, you know, how many episodes we were doing and what that ended up being, it wasn't great. And so that's why that was the, if I was making a ton of money, I don't know that I would have gotten into the extra stuff that I did, Sure. but I think I'm also an entrepreneur by, you know, by, by upbringing and, and, and genetics. So it's just kind of in me to always see if there's another, uh, another way to capitalize on something. Yeah. And how- so. Sorry, not not to cut you off, but how involved were you in like the buying and selling of these shows and creating? Like, were you like well, head with in? three sheets? With three sheets, I was a work for hire. I was okay. hired. Um, as a matter of fact, um, I um, uh, I I got I pitched this show to Comedy Central, uh, my buddy and I, called Hollywood Angels, and we were action figures. I wish I had them here. <laughs> and and literally, it was like beautiful sets. And then we had each of our hands in there walking around and then talking with her. Hey, are you doing whatever? And County Central loved it, bought it. Um, and then uh, Three Sheets was great. We're doing another season. It's our top show on the network after just doing season one. And so both of those shows wanted me. And both of them wanted first position. And for people don't, you can understand what, or assume what that means. But what it means is if we say, hey, we need you for four weeks in March, 
you can't do anything else. Uh, if both shows say that, one needs to be in first position, so the other one gets bumped and has to change their schedule. Right. They both wanted first position. They both wanted it in writing. And I was like, man, what do I choose here? And so, um, you know, I was. I remember my agents are going, you know, like, hey, we, we're not going to tell you what to do, but Comedy Central is a lot bigger than Mojo. And if this thing goes, they're saying it's the next South Park and all this kind of stuff. And so I was like, um, yeah, but Three Sheets is me and like I enjoy it and I like it and, and it's and the reception is really great. You know, and, and they were just saying, hey, look, we'll just find another host. It's not that big of a deal. And I was like, well, you know, everyone's sort of posturing as they're negotiating. Sure. I talked to my mom. My dad had passed away when I was uh, like 21. And I talked to my mom about this thing. Normally it would be my dad, but whatever. And she's like, and she always kind of chimes in every now and then with this great advice. And she goes, put them, fo- put them both in first position. Would they know? Are they going to see the contract <laughs> of the other one? And, like, and then when something happens, deal with it then. Like, maybe it won't even be a conflict. And here you are having to choose one. Choose both. Done. Told my lawyer, t- t- told my agent. I said, wow. I'm, I'm, well, they go, okay. Can't stop you from doing that. We're not going to tell them that, whatever. And so sh- sure enough, signed both. The the Comedy Central one was the, turned into this political nightmare, and it went away. Mm-hmm. Um, all these uh, people came in with opinions and, and all this kind of stuff, and they, they couldn't agree. It wasn't me and my partner. Uh, and then that, it, it went away because they, things out of our control, and then we were upset about that. And then a week later, I'm off shooting three sheets. So it's, 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 it was, uh, yeah, it was a work for hire for those. And then, and then afterwards, when I did Drinking Made Easy and Chug, it was me. Um, but I was talking to the producer of Three Sheets two days ago because we're trying to reboot it. Mm. Um, and uh, I just told him when I did Drinking Made Easy and Chug, I was the producer. I was also the talent. It's very difficult to like, worry about where the camera guys are. Hey, did you guys get that shot and all the kind of stuff while I'm trying to be here and have fun and just be in the moment. Sure. So I think that's really why part of the, you know, the magic with, with three sheets was, was maybe more so than it was with the other shows that I did. Yeah. Cause your, your head was somewhere else where you're trying to be a host and have fun and do all those other things. I mean, that's, yeah. that's super tough yeah. for sure. Um, and then now with all the different distribution realms that they have between netflix and hulu and i mean it makes sense to try and bring something back at this point or even facebook i mean facebook tv is a whole nother thing i mean yeah. what do you have an idea of where you kind of want to go if it does get rebooted can you talk about well, that yeah i don't care yeah for sure i mean yeah we we've been having this conversation um i mean he is just recently available um and one of the cool things about it too is that with three sheets when we were just getting in the groove, he would, he'd be on the road, he'd be on the road. And then he'd also write the shows and do all the post-production. And like, I could just do my madness. And then we would look at a rough cut of the show together and talk about what if we could do and some changes or whatever. But like, it was, it was him. He was, he was there and I was here. Um, and so now he's available. So I was like, Hey man, I literally, it gets brought out to me every single day. Like, you know, I did my podcast with Bert the other day. I'm doing it with you. In between, other people brought it up. Three Sheets needs to come back. I tried to get the rights to it. It's owned by Spike. They don't want to give it up, even though they're not doing anything with it. Yeah. Um, so um, so now we're like, I don't know, four sheets? <laughs> full, <laughs> full, fuller House? Yeah. Three or sheets? Uh, so anyway, so, so we're looking at it. But it could, I mean, it's wherever it goes. I just, I just want people to have access to it. If they... If everyone has access to it, they'll find it. If it's mm-hmm. something that is a subscription base and whatever, I get worried about that because um, I just want everyone to get access to it. You know, make your money off commercials or product placement or whatever it is. I, I, you know, I don't know. Um, I just wa- I just wish it was something that everyone could get. Hulu's great. Netflix are great. Is great. Um, but it could it could be also like you said, Facebook or YouTube Red or I don't mm-hmm. know something like that. So um, we're going to start having those conversations in about a week or two and hopefully get, get back out there and do what I do best. Yeah, that's exciting, man. And, and so you had mentioned earlier how kind of being an entrepreneur is in your in your blood, right? So you're kind of raised that way. So so get into that a little bit, and then we'll get into the clothing line. But, yeah. but how, well, did, that, how does that, that come about? The transition. That's the transition. So like I said, I wasn't making a lot of money. I wasn't even making enough money to pay my rent from three sheets. And so I was like, okay, what can I do? I realized I'm wearing blank T-shirts. Why don't I just make a T-shirt? So I told the network, and they're like, yeah, go for it. And so I made T-shirts, um, made up this logo and stuff like that, and then and then they started selling like crazy. No one really even knew the metrics of the show, how well, because it wasn't Nielsen rate, rated or whatever. No one really knew how many people were actually watching it. Um, and um, 
And then we would sell like, you know, in a month, 10,000 t-shirts. And we're just like, oh, there's something here. Yeah. So then I basically started saying like, hey, if I made like a, um, uh, what if I made like a sweatshirt? Okay, great. Sweatshirts would sell. Then I was like, well, what if I just put in these, these like holes for like, you know, for, to make them into drinking mitts, whatever, when that's sold. Um, can you turn the air off? This, I'm really hot. <laughs> <We're> in, this, <laughs> in the shot and I'm dying to <laughs> Um, at least, but, at least uh, you know it keeps you warm. So that's a yeah, plus, right? Yeah, it keeps you warm. Yeah. Um, but the uh, but then I was like, um, you know, the uh, I was like, wait, can I can I add like you know just little gloves to the hoodie, and then can I add a a bottle opener zipper? And I had a, a hoodie that I was sort of experimenting on that I sort of cut up and it was changing whatever, and then I it just started to evolve from from there. Um, and then, and then I was making, I made the drinking jacket on, on Kickstarter, but that was almost like tongue in cheek. I mean, it, because it was a great travel hoodie, we just called it the drinking jacket. Sure, for marketing then, purposes. It, yeah, but some people, a lot of people were like, well, I'm not much of a drinker, so I'm not going to buy it. I was like, no, it's just a good hoodie. So then we rebranded it as, well, we, I rebranded it as the adventure hoodie. Uh, and that did great. That was the number one fashion Kickstarter ever. And wow. so that, that enabled me to then, um, kickstart my, my company, which is adventure. And then, then I hired some great people. And so now we're a group of people, them with a lot more experience than, than I have, um, creating really, really nice stuff. And that's always been my goal is like, I, I don't want to put something out. That's not the best quality. My reputation's on the line. Besides I like nice stuff and I want to create nice stuff. So sure. our, our stuff isn't cheap, but it's, 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 there's nothing better than you could get you know, and, and, and with what we're making. Yeah. And what I've seen online through your new Kickstarter now that you just kind of launched, uh, it's really nice. Like it's, it's looks really nice. Obviously all the cool little gadgets within it is really, really cool. But, but the fact that it looks really nice. And I think a lot of times when you think of travel hoodies, sometimes they're bulky, there's a lot of mess with it and they might keep you warm, but then they're ugly. Like there's a good look to it, you know, right. aside from the fact that it's super functional. Um, and, and so you kind of really figured that out. I mean, A, you figured it out on your own, but now you have a team to really kind of bring that together. We talked a little bit about that before we hopped on the call. Um, but again, going back to the idea of like being a kid and kind of having entrepreneurial blood in you, in you like where did that all start from? Yeah, my, my dad was a, was an inventor. So he, he, he and his partner had a uh, uh, an elevator company. He was in school at Syracuse University, and then they were uh, building a freeway through the city, and you know, elevated fr- freeway. And so they had to tear down all these buildings, and so all the buildings that had elevators in them were just going to toss them out. So he arranged to go and get all those elevators, and then fix them up, and then resold them, and that started his company. He saw an opportunity. Sure. Um, and then, and then he would always like, you know, he invented a few things like hydraulic things to do with elevators. Not, he has a bunch, he had a bunch of patents, you know, probably had like, I don't know, 10 or 11. Uh, none of them really made anything. You know, he invented some like thing to like maximize. We had a boat and he's like, I wonder what the optimal, you know, you, you can do the trim and then the gas, whatever. He's trying to figure out the optimal angles of stuff. So he came up with a gauge that would tell you when you were at optimal fuel uh, efficiency and and uh and he made that for boats but nothing ever sold um you know, he had these great things but like he was he was one side of a brain you know he was he was the inventor and he was sure. always solving problems he wasn't the marketing guy um he you know he he was he was good with people but he wasn't great with people he wasn't he wasn't entire and extremely charismatic so um uh, that was sort of the, the missing piece, and I just wonder, like, if Kickstarter and the and the tools that we have access to now were around back then, maybe one of his things would have worked. I mean, sure, if you have a boat, why would you not want to maximize your your fuel efficiency with this little gauge and you hook it up? Um, right. I don't even smart. Oh, yeah, wait, no, you know it's funny. It's right here. This is it. That's awesome. That's yeah. really really cool. My, my brother, my brother, uh, mount, found it in a, in a box and then mounted it for me. For that- um. Give me that. Give me this. Oh my but, god. If you want to adopt him? His Ad- name is is Parsnip. <laughs> and he was he was really scared and he was found probably in an alleyway or something like that, right? And and now uh he is um what do you call it when they're like you know around humans? <laughs> no, love, love it. No, no, he's he's sort of been turned into like he's, he's not, huh? Lifting. 
Yeah, sure. But he's, yeah, so now he's a friendly cat, so he's not afraid anymore, and he just wants to be pet. So these, these actually, we, my, my wife, um, and I guess I, because I do some of the work too, uh, take in rescue kittens from kill shelters around Los Angeles, uh, meaning that if they bring in a sick cat, there's way too many healthy cats, and so sick cats are pretty quickly euthanized. Right. So there's a bunch of groups that go in there and, and adopt them and then put them in homes like ours. And so we always have plenty of cats. So if you have cat allergy, like my, buddy Jim, my, like my buddy Jim the cop can never come over my house. And it was almost like planned because it's amazing. So I never have to see him again, which is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, so, anyway. You said you had seven cats right now, which is which is yeah. crazy for me. My sister, my, both my sisters have, I think, two cats, maybe even three. Yeah. And like every time I turn around, there's another cat. I couldn't imagine yeah. having seven. Yeah, it, it's very overwhelming. There's a lot of cats. These ones are kept in a separate room until they're uh, healthy um, enough to go into general population. But then they were already adopted out, so now we have a new a new litter coming in in a few days. So very cool. Yeah. Very yeah. very cool. So always something out of the lab house. Yeah, you're always doing something. Obviously, <laughs> obviously at this point, building jackets, television shows, saving it's cats' lives. Boring. Yeah, exactly. Not a boring life to lead, but but like you said, you know, your father seems to, to be a real big influence in your life, right? Uh, and, sure. You know, you said you lost him when you were 21 years old, um, and and I can yeah, relate. So if, I, if you find him, return him because it's been a long time. I don't even know what he looks like anymore. So so, so it's actually really it's funny little, that you made a joke about that term, <laughs> lose, losing somebody, right? Yeah. So I, my mom died. Um, uh, two years, a little over two years ago, uh, she had a 20 year pill addiction that ended up taking her life. Uh, but she was a great, she was an amazing woman, amazing mother, and, and really kind of cared for me. And, um, so it was really traumatic kind of experience. Right. And so I was 30 at the time, 29, I think. Um, and, uh, you know, for, for me, well, I don't even know what I was going to go off of. Oh, you well, said, you it, said, it, the, it's funny you talk about, lust. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't talk about it for a long time. And that yeah. what you always say, like, yeah, people always say like, what's the nicest thing to say? Like, sorry for your loss. I remember, Someone else was in that. I'll tell you this story that no one's ever heard. Uh, I did a project with Merv Griffin, um, and uh, and and his son was the producer. Do you know who Merv is? Merv yes, Griffin, of course. Okay, yes. all right. So, I mean, <laughs> some younger people don't know. He created a uh, Wheel of Fortune, Jeopardy. He was at one point the richest uh, celebrity, uh, the first celebrity billionaire in the world. And so, um, and I I did this. I pitched a show, and, and we did it, and shot it with him, and whatever. And his son produced it, and then. And then it didn't get picked up, and I sort of lost touch, whatever. And then, and then his son Tony called me up out of nowhere, like six months after his dad had passed away, and he's like, "Hey, man, I think it's really lousy that you never." He left a message on my voicemail. I think it's really lousy, you, you know. Of all my friends, you're the only person that didn't didn't call me, you know, to just say they're sorry to hear about dad's passing and da 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 and all this stuff. And I just think it's really crappy of you, and you call yourself a friend or whatever. And, well, in the meantime, I hadn't talked to him in like you know a year, mm-hmm. and. I called him up and said, hey, man, you know, when my dad passed away, the last thing I wanted to do was be reminded of it if I was having a good day. So, like, someone called call me up and be like, hey, I'm sorry about your dad. I would be like, oh, you're right. That did happen. And it would kind of ruin my day. Mm-hmm. And so my way of dealing with that was people is I just say, like, hey, man, I'm your friend. I'm here. If, they want, if there's something comes up, you know, let's talk about it. Um, and so and, and that has gotten me in trouble a few times because I'm, I'm seen as being insensitive. But in fact, I'm being overly sensitive and overly thinking about it and not bringing things up. So. Yeah, totally. It, and, and you think about yourself in that time and what did you want? and What did you need? And you t- you try and give them that when they want something different. That's a whole nother discussion. But that's you had, right. That's, totally you, different. that's exactly right. <laughs> you, I mean, you, you had mentioned him being lost. You're like, oh, if you find him. Uh, the, the reason I thought I found that funny is because my mom used to hate the term lost or passed away. And because, so when her father died, uh, somebody would say, Oh, he passed, you know, your, your dad passed away. She goes, he's t- passed to where? Like he's yeah, dead. Exactly. Like, what are, you, like yeah. what are you, what are you trying to say? Right. So when it's, I remember at the funeral, I, I gave the eulogy at her funeral and I remember specifically saying that she's dead. Like it was all part of it because that was her whole thing. Like this yeah. is, this is the end for whatever, whatever this life is. I mean, I believe in energies passing on. I don't know what I believe really. Um, but you know, but it was just, I had, there, there, there was people that had, you saw my Irish wolf on and this people, there's this guy who has two who walk around the neighborhood and, uh, and he, he had an, a puppy and, 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 you know, they used to have two big ones. Now he had a big one and a puppy. And I'm like, oh, what happened to them? He's like, and we lost him. I'm like, where? You know, like, you know, <laughs> like, no, man, come on. You can't say like we lost him yeah. like that. <laughs> Especially with a dog. It's, yes. It's the, it's the colloquial we as in the universe lost. I don't know. But anyway. <laughs> he, he ran away to the rainbow, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the rainbow I'm bridge. I'm like, well, we should find him. And then as I was saying, I was like, oh, that's, 
now I know what you said. Okay, thanks for being so cryptic about your dog, you know? (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Now that we've gone off and talked about death and all these other things. (laughs) Bring it back. (laughs) Yeah. So now now you're an entrepreneur and you're you're building this clothing line or you've built this clothing line and and you're relaunching through a Kickstarter uh, with (laughs) with some new stuff. So let's talk about that a little bit and talk about, um, you know, we talked about kind of your why and why you built it. And so Mm -hmm. what's the next step with it? Like what is, what's the real goal with it? It's funny. uh, This, um, uh, I'm like, I'm really excited about this, this clothing brand because a, I wanted to make something innovative that people would use. And when we did the Kickstarter, that was the number one fashion Kickstarter ever. It was proven. That was, that was, that was the case study that people are actually looking for something like that. Um, if I wasn't tethered, I'd go and grab another one because they turn into pillows. But um, the, uh, the 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 cool thing about it is that yes, at one point it was a hoodie. So the company was let's make a hoodie and let's sell it, whatever. Then it was hold off for a year and a half as we deliver those and like let's figure out who we are as as a company. So as I said, I was I mean it's my wife and I we we started it and then we brought in this this um it's funny I. I I say this girl, Erica, but that maybe sounds like she's like 12, but she's <laughs> in 30, but she's younger than me. So we've always, been, we've been having this debate. I'm like, do I, if I, do I refer to her as a woman or a girl? She's like, no, girl's fine. I'm younger than you. Anyone younger than you is girl. So <laughs> there's more girls in the world and less women is the older I get. Um, but the, um, so she, she was at Lululemon for five years and just really acquired great um, knowledge about all aspects of production and, and, and marketing and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then this guy Hess, uh, who is uh, our creative director, who has done product design and marketing, all that kind of stuff as well. And so we just did a big stop down where if, if anyone that follows the brand, and by the way, the name of the brand is Adventure. Um, it's Adventure with the first uh, E being a three. And I'll explain that in a second. But um, there's a reason for that. Um, so we just stopped down and said, who, we, who are we? What can we do? What, how, do we, how do we take a break? As the same thing I did with Monkey Rum, stopped down for a year and said, "Let's now that we've proven that it works, let's stop it for a moment and figure out where we want it to actually be, rather than playing catch up and constantly just like, you know, letting a day to day dictate how we grow as a company." So we stopped, built our social media strategy, um, um, our messaging, our, our corporate identity, who we want to be, who are we, and what do we want to do, and who are we as a group of people, and what do we want our our, you know, our culture and our, and our, our, I guess our, our customers to be, um, I say, I guess customers because we kind of consider them just like part of the brand. It's not like the customers you're in when you, when you are part of it, you're part of it. Yeah. Um, and so then we also had, I, I originally put a three in there because I wanted to plant three trees with every purchase. And, and I just was like, wow, that is a huge, that's not just like go out and plant three trees. If you're selling, you know, 20,000, 30,000, 50,000 units. That's, yeah, that's crazy. 150,000 trees. And so I just was waiting until this campaign to sort of announce that of why there's a three uh, in, in, our, in our name. And, um, and so we actually partnered with this company, uh, this group called uh, Art Angel Ancient Tree Archive. And what they do is they clone champion trees. So the biggest redwood, the biggest sequoia, the biggest oak, the, the the hardiest trees in the world. If you have you ever seen a redwood, giant redwood? Have you ever been to? Not in person, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, just just okay. photos and people standing next to them. So you you, see, yeah, you so, can tell by scale. So, so um, we were just as a, the company. We went up to Sequoia National Park last weekend, and we were looking at General Sherman, which is by mass the biggest tree in the world. It's thirty six feet wide. So not a circumference, it's wide. Yeah, that's insane. I mean, like, it, it, there's like, it's like three cars, you know, three 12 foot cars all parked like that. And that's how wide this, it can't, I can't even go wide enough in this picture to show you. Yeah, it's insane. And so, but there's something in the genetic makeup of this tree of why it is so huge. Um, and other trees around it are not quite as big, still big, but not quite as big. And so this, um, this group, uh, Archangel Ancient Tree Archive have gone and gotten the rights to clone these trees with little clippings um, and and then grow those and propagate those because they're drought resistant, pest resistant. There's a lot of things with like the um, uh, this 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 uh, this 
oak beetle. What, I forget what it's called. My wife will know. Uh, this beetle that's devastating pine trees all over the country. Um, this beetle from Japan that was brought over here accidentally and just is like – Spotted lanternfly? Is, this, is it the spotted lanternfly? So, so here's the thing. So I live in a county called Berks County, Pennsylvania. We're okay. one of like the, the places in the country that are being like completely infested by these things. I think we just got a state grant for like $25 million to, to start eradicating them. They're iridescent green with those white spots on them? No, uh, you know? no this is a different one. Okay. But this, is, this is another well, thing that go. came from a different country over here, and sure. it's just literally decimating everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and so these guys are growing these trees that are are resistant to that, and so we have a partnership with them, where we're purchasing three trees, and then they're planting them for us. As you can imagine, there's big expense and and coordination uh, to, to do with that. Yeah. But they're a great group, great group of people, um, started by the Millark family. And, uh, and so that is how, that's how, that's the, how we're doing it. So I don't want people to think like, I mean, I mean, I will physically go out and get my hands dirty and I, and I, and I have like, we've planted trees with them and and stuff, but there is a great master plan. I had one person said to me on social media, as people tend to blurt, um, dare I say troll, it's like, Hey man, Hey man, why don't you just go and plant three trees? I don't need to buy my, you know, you don't need to sell me a jacket for me to go, you know, for you to go plant trees. Why don't you just go and plant, plant three trees? And I was like, no, my goal is not to plant three trees. My goal is to plant three million trees. Right. 30 million, whatever it is, um, as many as we can. And it's like, don't buy something from me. If, if my story inspires you, don't buy something to do that. You can go plant three trees. That's fine. Just nurture them at a certain point. They'll take care of themselves. Um, and, but, they, but they filter um, uh, pollu- pollution in the air. They create oxygen. They, they, they purify groundwater. And they do a lot of things that people don't realize. And and there's about half as many now as there were, you know, 200 years ago. So I mean, obviously, we just need them. We we're we're using uh, it's like it's like a one third. So we're so we're removing three thirds and we're replanting two thirds. So every year we're always down always down that yeah. one third. So it's like a percent, by the way, a percent a year. So any, so anyway, so, so that's what we're doing, um, creating the great merchandise and all this kind of stuff. So now we're we're a company with an identity. We have the tree program. We have great great merchandise and we have a culture of getting outside and we're going to have events and stuff like that and um and so that's that's that was really the, the big stop down again we did the same same stop down for my monkey realm company but um yeah that's so that's what i'm that's what really excite me excites me there's still tv shows if i was able to do a, a three sheets re- re- reboot that would make me very excited but there's no reason why i couldn't do both especially when i have great teams on both sides right and actually it's, it's funny that you said that because i was going to ask you from an entrepreneurial standpoint you, you do a lot of things right so you're still hosting a podcast which you just recently relaunched uh you have adventure which you're doing the kickstarter right now you're looking to relaunch a television show What's the secret to being able to kind of maintain and, and make sure you're in the right place at the right time uh, to make sure all these things are flourishing? I guess you just always have to be. I mean, man, I don't know what the answer to that. I got I got I got way more failures than I have successes. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, I told you about that Comedy Central show that I was doing. I mean, my buddy and I had pitched thirty shows. Wow. And by the way, it's not just to come up with an idea. We would storyboard them. We would, we would we would shoot them. You know, create sizzles, which is like a three minute version of the show, and and all these things. And we were really close with a lot of different shows, but that was the first one that we sold. That didn't even and that didn't even work out. Um, so it's 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 just there's there's I don't know. I want to say there's two kinds of people. There's the ones that are comfortable, you know, going off and 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 having stability, right? I'm not going to say one is better than the other, so I'm being careful about my words. One is a, a more stable life of a nine to five working for a company, but those are often unstable as well, instable. Um, and so, or there's the entrepreneurial route where um, if you're not the, if you're not pushing that ox cart, that ox cart is not moving. Mm. Um, when you are able, everything starts off as an individual. Every every movement starts off by an individual and. And, and you may it may quickly turn into a movement with more people, but at some point it's just one. Yeah. And and very often or always in the beginning of anything I do, it's just me. So if I didn't come to work, if I didn't come into my office today, um, work wouldn't be getting done. But but as, as longer that I can keep doing that and and show lead by example and add people to my team, now if for for some reason I wanted to take the day off, stuff would still move. 
I still need to captain the ship to be in here, but there's a people that really know what they're doing and doing it well and care about it. And, you know, in order to do that too, I think that, you know, you got to give them a little bit of the piece of the pie and have them share in the successes of it as well. Um, but it's, you know, keep creating until something is great. And then I can tell you uh, so many stories about things. I'll just tell you one quick example. So I'm a, I'm an artist, so I, I'm a designer, illustrator, painter, and so at one point I was I, I decided I was going to do this greeting card company while I was auditioning, you know, back in my like late twenties or something like that, early thirties or something, and I was doing greeting cards, and I had gotten in touch through a friend of a company, this husband and wife that launched their own greeting card company, and they said, "What's your plan?" And I'm like, "Well, I mean, having, having real real fun time doing these hand painted, you know, greeting cards and stuff like that." And they go, well, what's your plan? Like, you know, for that, you know, this and that. You need, you need to go to trade shows. You need to do this and this and this. And I was like, yeah, I was supposed. To, I was just kind of looking to supplement. I wasn't looking to like. I, I'm an actor. Yeah. I'm looking to just you know whatever. And they go, you can't dabble. There's enough competition in greeting cards where you can't dabble in it. It's the same with any industry sure. that anyone's thinking of thinking about. My buddy wanted to create a uh, a Bloody Mary mix. It's like. With anything you're doing, there are people that are they are working their tails off to do it. And in order to be successful, like you, you're doing this podcast. In order to be successful, you need to live, you know, eat, breathe it. Mm-hmm. And and so they said, look, if you're not going to do that, don't waste your time. Focus on what you're doing with your, you know, your acting or whatever it is. And so I go, all right, that day, hung up the phone, put it all in a box. It's still in a box. Wow. And it was like it was it was great advice. If you're not too, going to go all in, if you're not going to literally blood sweat and tears this thing then don't do it and 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 that's how i approach everything and 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 you also have to be really quick to realize when it's futile i had this guy that was pitching this show this this charming australian guy who kind of looked like a young mel gibson so he had he had you know stuff going for him and and he wanted to create this this show about superfoods and he was pitching it, pitch it to me, and I, I, I said, "All right, I'll bring it to my agent." My agent was like, eh, "I don't think it's something. It's not. Does it's missing something? Whatever." And for two years, he was just pitching, pitching, pitching the same show, and everyone mm. was saying no. Well, if you get a bunch of no's, you move on. You know what I mean? Like some people would say, "Oh, but you know, like Rocky." People said no to Rocky, and he finally made it. He's like, "Yeah, but he had other stuff going on, and you know, he was." I think he was doing porn, but uh, but anyway, <laughs> he, he was he, actually he did do he that. Yeah. Porn, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but the thing is, is I, that, that that's it. That's just my mindset as an entrepreneur, and it's and and sometimes you wake up and you're just like, oh my god, what am I, what am I doing? But you just smack yourself in the face, get up, and then you go at, at, after it again. So, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't know what the I don't know what the trick is to it. <laughs> I don't think there is a trick. But like you said, it's how do you, how, how are you how do you make sure you're in the right place at the right time? And just you got to be as many places as many times as you can and just a l- lot of oppor- I have an opportunity to go to this lunch today with some people and I don't know if anything will come of it but I'm going to go because it's not going to hurt me to do it you know? right yeah and that's the thing too I mean you got to be smart you have to be smart but at the same time you have to say yes to a lot of things to for it to make sense like you're saying yes a hell of a lot more than they're saying yes until you build it up to the point where they're all saying yes which is Thanks. which is a great mindset and actually when I was interviewing Fabio he talked about building it up and then having it work for you he goes I make money when I sleep and he goes I'm going to take I'm going to sip this coffee right now and he took a sip of the coffee put it down he goes I just fucking made 500 bucks I'm like <laughs> I made it, I made a thousand yeah <laughs> fuck Fabio no I'm just kidding <laughs> he, he's he, he's of the same blood you know mm-hmm. like like us entrepreneurs um you know, we're 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 a little annoying as friends because we just can't help like you know, it's not to say that I my friends are opportunities, but like you just can't help it when a friend's like, Hey, I got this and this and this and, and you're like, Hmm, what if we did this? And so your my brain always tends to go there and I don't know. I'm not saying I'm annoying. I'm saying Fabio's annoying. Yeah, just in case, <laughs> totally. Was. But I, I'm the same way. Like my friend can say something and be like, oh my God, this is a great business idea. And they're like, no, no, no. I was just telling you what I did on a Saturday. Uh, right. It's just kind of the way your mind works, which is, yeah. which is completely true. Um, yeah. and, but, but, but you're right. I mean, you really have to work your ass off. And, and you know, Fabio is a, a good example of somebody who I have no idea how he does it because – I, I get nowhere near the amount of text messages that guy does, I imagine, but he responds every single time. Yeah. You know, you know who's like that too? And I was thinking about this the other day. Like I could text Mark Cuban and he will text me right back. And it's not some robot or it's not an assistant, whatever. Yeah. It's him. So I, I don't know. I don't know if, if – I, 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 don't, I don't know how he does it. I'm always less like, 
aren't you hang aren't you in a, in a plane or with your family or at a game or yeah. whatever it is? Oh, during a Mavs game he won't text you back but like right after right before it was it's amazing and I I guess for him that's you know and, and, and for Fabio it's like they don't want to miss an opportunity with my I mean my phone's always in my you know my hand or in my pocket or right in front of me and it's, if something comes in I try to address it and especially as a text because emails emails if anyone wants something to get done from me they, they know in my company they email me because mm-hmm. then it's in my inbox and I can't delete it until it's done whereas a text gets pushed out of the way by other texts and it yep. doesn't haunt you because it just gets pushed down the line so texts I tend to re- respond to them very quickly with whatever the answer is quickly because at some point if I don't respond to it right away it's never going to get responded to yeah and then you forget about it like or you're I'm, I'm a big responder in my head and then I don't respond ever and like three weeks later I'm like oh shit I meant to yeah, respond did, did to I, this did I say yes I would <laughs> join you for lunch or did I think it because I meant to say yes and I think I thought it so sorry I if showed I up to the there. restaurant and you weren't there so yeah yeah but, <laughs> Just putting this out there, Mark Cuban's my number one on my list since the day I've launched this podcast to be a right. guest. So okay. I've, I've interviewed his brother, Brian. He's got an yeah. interesting story. So yeah. he, was, he was pretty early on. I think it was like episode 18 or something like that. But but yeah, man. Um, I'll, it, gi- I'll, give you, I'll give you his email. But I think, I think he's um, – uh, especially now because of the whole Shark Tank and a lot of other things, I think that he's less willing to do – interviews because he's very careful about the information that he wants to get out there right i mean i don't know if he's running for president i don't know if i i don't know if i think that's a good idea or not but (laughs) um but you know anyway so you you know him better than i do i would vote for the guy yeah i'd vote for him he 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 is he is he is he is a he's a a straight shooter Mm -hmm. and he's a very smart guy and he's a guy that got to where he he is by working very hard, he's an entrepreneur. Uh, I'm not making any, any comparisons to the current president, or maybe I am. Um, <laughs> but but he's also like um, appreciates where he where he is and what he's gotten himself to. And I've I've gone out and gotten drunk with him, and and I've had lunch with him, and hung out with him. At, you know, at, at his at his um, uh, the arena and. Um, uh, the Mavs arena and um, the Dallas people in Dallas will hate me for not knowing the name, but they, maybe it's the American airlines stadium. Anyway, oh, yeah, I have no um, idea. <laughs> yeah. And you, and you forget, you forget that that's his building and you forget that what, you know, that like when you offer to pay for lunch that, it, you know, it's a nice, it's a nice gesture. And of course I always do. Um, but I remember walking through the American airlines um, stadium um, uh, where the Mavs play and, and he's like, we were heading off to this party. He's like, I'm going to duck in real quick and just change. I'm like, where are you changing in locker room? He's like, no, I have an apartment here. Of course you have an apartment there. <laughs> of course you have an apartment there. Why, why, wouldn't, why you? wouldn't you? Yeah. You built, you built it. Of course you're going to have a cool apartment there. Why it's wouldn't you? Crazy. And it's going to have a, probably an amazing view. Yeah. It's going to be a view, whatever you want. So yeah. So, so yes, I, I would vote for him. He's, he's a, he's a, he's a really straight, like I said, a straight shooter and, and a, and a good guy. And, I, I I believe that he would go in there and and help the country as opposed to helping his friends. So. Yes, and that is exactly my thought with him too. Because uh, you know, knowing his story a little bit, just I mean, I remember reading a, a, a blog of his when I was like eighteen about how he like sold plastic bags door to door, trash bags door to door was like his first like job. Uh, and I was like, wow, that's really intriguing. And then I got to know his brother a little bit through social media, and uh, then he was on the show. And and they're, they're just real Pennsylvania guys. Like yeah. they, and they haven't forgotten their roots, like you said. And then that's the kind of the person that you kind of want to follow. Right. And, you know, I, I feel like, you know, back to you, which is the part of the reason we're having this conversation. Um, I think you're kind of, you kind of fit that mold and it's probably why you get along with somebody like him. Um, because you were literally what I'm picking up on is that you're head down, get to work, grind for your dreams, but, but be kind about it. Right. Like you're, you're, you're growing trees and you're saving cats and you're doing all these other things on the side because you care. Like there's clearly some sort of care. How important is that to what you're doing? You know, it's interesting. I I, I want to save the world, and and it's a silly thing to say. And if you say something like that, you sound like an idiot mm-hmm. because it is an, it is generally speaking an idiotic thing to say. <laughs> um, and and I'm I'm uh you know we have the the cats here, and you know I I'm I'm I love the national parks, and I'm planting trees. But I'm very careful about about the way I put that message out there because not everyone agrees with me, and sometimes they think, you know, someone like someone's like, "Dude, I didn't realize you were getting political." You know, I'm 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 not going to follow you anymore. And I was like, 
how is me planting a fucking tree political? <laughs> yeah. Like, it creates oxygen for you to breathe. I mean, if you want to find a political statement in there, fine, go ahead. But I'm planting a tree, which is what your house is made of, um, um, which is which produces the air you breathe, cleans up the, the smog that you produce. Yeah. Um, and so it's like, what what are you doing wrong? I mean, my ultimate goal really is to create habitats for, for, you know, for animals. So help people help animals. You know, we, um, we're in Los Angeles and, and I'm, I'm backed up to this, uh, this, this state park, um, and where we go hiking and stuff. And it's surround, it's, it's, it's a park surrounded by the city. Um, and the park, the park actually continues on. It's like Griffith park in Hollywood, but there's freeways that are cutting through at certain parts. And so there's some there's a few mountain lions up there. There's coyotes. Um, there's deer. They'll they'll sometimes just come down to this neighborhood and then get lost. And just like there's a coyote and they're just kind of like scared. And the, right. the cars are all, are all honking and get out of here, you know. And just like and again, this is the this is the bigger message where I start to lose people. But I'm going to share it with you and you of listen. course. Um, is you know we are we are encroaching into their land right. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah totally they're not, they're not they're not coming into my neighborhood this is their neighborhood way before and maybe not theirs but they're you know they're you know their their parents and parents parents and all that kind of stuff and so you know that is a big problem and we're cutting out all these habitats and we're and we're putting freeways on migratory routes and stuff like that that you mm-hmm. know and so there's there's a lot of problems and um i can't solve those problems right now i'm hoping things you know in the future where we're at a, we're at a really important part of of our socially and environmental awareness that we have never been at ever in history yeah we've always taken things for granted and there's plenty of stuff and then there's you know there god will make more and whatever animals are for our for our consumption and to wear and and uh and you know the the trees are for us to build with and all this kind of stuff um and i think that the the current administration is doing a great job of of reminding people that all this stuff is very temporary and it's our job as people to stand up and, and, and fight for it. So, you know, that's, that's my, that's my, 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 my ultimate goal. But yeah. in the meantime, I love to travel. I love to have, have a drink with friends or new friends. Uh, and I like to make, uh, uh, cool stuff and I like to make fun apparel. So if I can do those things and, and, and help, then I'm going to do it. Yeah. Um, you know, I always wanted to sort of like I always told myself, you know, when you have dreams and delusions of grandeur as as a as a an entertainer, you always see yourself getting to a place where you have the power and, uh, and influence of of someone like Leonardo DiCaprio or Matt Damon, people that are lending themselves to environmental or water, you know, clean water things and stuff like that. Um, and you always tell yourself, when I get to that point, or that's what I always told myself, when I get to that point, that's when I'll start to make a change. And then I was sort of said, wait, no, I'm not. I'm not getting any younger. Who knows if that's going to ac- actually come? So I'm going to make that happen now. Yeah. Um, I'm going to start to see what I can't do to influence things now. And and you know, saving the animals or this kind this kind of thing is very polarizing. Saving the trees, planting trees, it's not. So I'm doing the same thing, but it's a message that no one can really argue with. And I, and and at the end, hopefully, my goal is is you know. To save to save the world. <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, yeah. there's ac- there's action and there's advocacy, right? So obviously, you're taking a ton of action, which is really needed. Um, and but but if you think about it, you know, you'd mentioned earlier how how openly and easily I talked about my mom passing away from a drug addiction. That's part of this platform. The reason I talk about it so easily is because I feel like there's a purpose behind what I talk about. Um, and you know, maybe somebody listening will say, "Oh, wow, you know, I have to look at this in a different light." So I shared my story as a guest on another podcast, and I got the I got an email from a woman who was like, "Because of you, I'm." going to fix my relationship with my mom. You know, I understand that her addiction isn't her fault. Um, And so those are the things like, so I'm building a platform through podcasting um, where it gives me a voice to say, Hey, let's make a difference. And that's what you've done, right? You can't, you make a, you can make an impact no matter who you are, but you make a larger impact if you have a platform. And, And that's really what you're doing. You're building that through your clothing line and your television shows and your podcasts and all these other things. And I think that's admirable. Um, and, and there should never be a second where you have to defend yourself and anybody who gets angry about that's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it, it, it's the nature of the beast. It's, it's, it becomes, it's very I- easy for people to judge you, um, and have it reach you. Whereas 20 years ago, 
someone might think you suck, but it's really difficult for them to get that message to you. Whereas now you could tell me that I suck really easily. You could shoot me an email or you could put it on my social media and I would know that I suck. Or I would know that you think that I suck. Or I would know that you want me to think that you think I suck. And I and, that, and that's usually how it is. And I mean, I've had in the past people write me something. And, and I'm lucky to not get I, – I get incredibly few things that are not nice. Um, but uh, – um, I, uh, sorry, there's this squirrel trying to get into my office and I don't know what <laughs> you're looking to. It's the most amazing thing. He's, he, <laughs> sorry, I got to go. All right, sorry. He was on his back legs, not on the glass, but just back sort of looking in like I have some. <laughs> oh, the trees. You want some trees? I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. I was going to take a picture of him, but he ran away. Um, what was I, what was I rambling about? Uh, oh, um, the people that, just, the people that hate you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to the person, I'm, I'm convinced it's my mom. Just kind of keeping me humble. Over and over um, again. But if I, once I have a conversation with this person, if they'll email me and I'm like, "Look, uh, you know, I think you might have misconstrued something that I said, or you may have jumped to a conclusion about who you think that I am." But I'm just a guy who's trying his hardest to be successful and provide for my family and 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 do what I can to make it and, and succeed and survive in this world. So you know. You think that you know you're, you're suggesting that I think that I'm somehow better or this and that, like you know that could be further from the truth. Mm. And then it ends up with them, you know, apologizing, um, you know, because and 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 how many people that are reaching out to you to say something not nice are just having their own problems and just need to put that onto you because they feel like that's going to make themselves feel better. So yeah. and and I'm at a point in my life where I know that's where it is. It still hurts a little bit when you get something, someone saying something not nice, but you know where it's coming from, and you know that it's not really about you, because if you can sleep at night, then that's all that matters. Yeah, I remember the first hate email that I got, and the guy would like rip me apart. Like, I'm sorry about that, by the way. I just, <laughs> I, I just I had some things I needed to get off my chest, and as you long were as there, you felt I better thought, for it, yeah. that's all that <laughs> yeah, matters. Yeah, uh, oh, great. <laughs> I, I, I wrote this really, really long email. Um, and in response to it, and then I deleted it before I hit send, thank God, because it was just anger and I was pissed because yeah. this guy, you know what I mean? And I didn't hit send, uh, in response, but, but yeah, it's an interesting feeling getting that when you're like, what is the, what's the point? Like you have so much energy you're giving to this negativity. Um, yeah. but you know, it's, it's cool because I have this platform now that I talk to a lot of successful people like you, uh, no matter what, no matter how you c- categorize success, money, fame, health, great relationship, whatever it is, I've talked to everybody in d- different realms of the world. So my question for you is, what's your definition uh, definition of success, and what are three things you do every single day to ensure that success? I mean, I just got to keep the I, I, keeping the ball rolling is is sometimes success. You know, when you're when it's just like, what am I doing? You got to just you got to you got to be able to just keep, like I said, pushing that ox cart. You know, um, and uh, or maybe you pull ox carts. I don't know. It's an, it's an analogy. I don't really have an ox cart, but I sometimes feel like I do and I'm pushing it. Um, I, I think it's, um, it's, you know, there's, there's different, there's different ways of looking at it. I, I have a great, uh, marriage. Um, I, you know, but that takes work, but it's great. It's awesome and it's worth it. Um, and I have, um, you know, I have a home um, the bank owns most of it, but I own some, <laughs> you know, so there's some equity there and there's, there's value there. Um, and I'm, uh, I've, I've created a company that, um, not only do I have people that work with me are behind me, um, but there are, there are customers, members of the community. They're also a part of it as well. So I think that there's success in all that. Um, you certainly can't, you know, base all of it off of, money because if you do you're probably leaving some stuff behind of course some people can and that's fine i mean what i wouldn't you know do for financial independence you know where i could literally just do whatever, everything i wanted to do but if i had that i'd probably get bored in about 30 days and be back to trying to figure out what to do to keep myself busy and exercise my brain and my creativity and stuff like that mm-hmm. so um Things things are by no means perfect, but I'm I'm happy, and because I'm I'm working off of the choices that I made, um, and the older I get, hopefully the better choices I make, uh, and so I guess maybe that's 
my, that's the long answer of, of, of what I think success is. And, um, and if I consider myself successful, yeah, I do. I do. Awesome. I mean, I would, you know, if I get three sheets back on the air, it'll be, it's not going to change anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not going to change who I am. It's not going to change a lot of stuff, but it'll be, it'll be fun and it'll be nice and it'll be a, light, a nice uh, endorphin boost for a little bit until it turns into real work and which, which I enjoy. So yeah, there you go. Just, just <laughs> wins all around. And, and if you do three sheets again, you come to Philadelphia, I'm hoping I get the invite. To be a part of that episode, <laughs> you're like, yeah, okay. Done, done deal. Right. Do you know who you know who Steve McKenna is? He's who's my he was he showed up in three sheets. If yes. you go watch Drinking Drinking yeah, It Easy, yeah, the he's beer. there. Yeah, so he was just out here this la- this past weekend, um, and and he he just he lives in Philly, uh, oh, nice. as as does my brother, and then my my mentor Pat Croce. Which, if you're a Philly guy, do you know who Pat Croce is? I know Pat okay. Croce. So I grew up in Ocean City, New Jersey, and I'd see Pat when he broke his hips or something. He broke his hip at one point. Um, no, would, yeah, his, uh, his 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 shin. His shin. His, yeah. his, so, his leg. Yeah. Which is like he snapped. Yeah. It. Like it was serious. He snapped it. Yeah. yeah. He I would lost see it. him arm pedaling his bike down down the boardwalk because that guy was in better shape than some of his players. Uh, at whatever age he was then, I mean, I don't know how old he he's is. He's in now. his sixties now. He's better shaped than me. I can't keep up with him. Yeah, yeah it's it's crazy. So it's a guy. This a guy who almost had his leg literally was hanging on by just some Ugh. tissue. The bone Ugh. broke. It was a, it was a motorcycle accident. That's right. They yeah. wanted to remove it three times, but he was a physical therapist that you know invented the term sports medicine, mm-hmm. and he rehabbed himself. So it was a leg they wanted to remove. And I was visiting him in Key West, and we were going for a run, and I was trying to keep up with him. You know, which is. <laughs> He, yeah. that, that's that's success <laughs> you know? yeah that's in, that's insane and, I, and the yeah. so the eagles their their super bowl parade is today uh yeah. down broad street so that was a fun little weekend that we just passed but uh but yeah definitely a cool and time the, for the and, city. And, the, and the the whole city didn't burn so i think that's success some right parts there. of it did <laughs> yeah <laughs> there were fires somewhere and they, they yeah, like sure. put crisco on the poles and all that stuff but yeah <laughs> but so so how does my audience get a hold of this clothing how do they get a hold of you? How do they follow you? What's all so the so? Go to Kickstarter, uh, easiest way, and just type in adventure. You can spell it our way. You can spell it your way. Um, you're going to find our adventure gear. Um, I get, yeah, it's on Kickstarter until uh, March first. Then it's on Indiegogo for a month. Um, we we launch our stuff through crowdfunding because it's a great way to get the word out there really quickly. Um, they can also, uh, you know, our ad- adventure is our brand. If you want to learn about us, it's A D V three N T U R E. So the first uh, E is a three. Uh, social media or Zane Lamprey at gmail dot com is my email, and I'm the one that sees it. Very very cool. So I'll, I'll link all that stuff up in the show notes. Cool. That way they can just click on it and do all that fun stuff. Uh, so I wrap up every single episode with five rapid fire questions. Some are fun, some are serious, but I ask you this: answer okay. with only one word or at the most one sentence. Are you ready? Okay. Can I say the word penis five times? You absolutely. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Okay. If that's your answer every single no, time. I'll try, I'll try not to. What is your favorite thing to eat? <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. But is, that is that a real question? No, that's not a real question. Although, <laughs> although there is. <laughs> what do you like to put in your mouth? Oh, okay. Oh, you got me. Okay. oh that one. Okay. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> there is actually, there is one. It was the second one, but I'll ask it first, which okay. is still be funny. What, what's your favorite? <laughs> Sorry. What what's your favorite smell? Um oh, I just walked by it the other day. Two smells. Um they're flowers. One is honeysuckle, which is now in bloom, like I said, I'm in Los Angeles. Uh the other one is uh Plumera, Plumeria, Plumera in, in Hawaii. Um if you get up when you get off the plane and away from sort of the jet fuel smell, walk out of the terminal, you smell it in in a Hawaii. So really the smell of Hawaii is is something I, I need to get, and I, and I make sure I go out there. One, one of my buddies uh, owns Maui Brewing Company. I have a lot of friends in Maui, and so I, I'll go out there once a year just to, like, detoxify. So the answer is Maui That's or awesome. Hawaii. That's yeah. awesome. What's your favorite alcoholic beverage that you've ever had? And you've drank many, many kinds. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, the, the, the truthful answer is Monkey Rum, which is my, my rum company. But I created something that I wanted to create because I – it was something that I wanted. I'll just give you the quick background of that. Well, monkey is only one word, so monkey is one answer. Then the quick, the quick uh, <laughs> uh, resolve to that is, people were always asking me what my favorite drink was, and I always liked having you know spiced rum and coke, whatever. But I didn't like the the spiced rum that I that I could get because it was usually like a cheaper one, you know, that everyone knows, whatever. And so I wanted to create a premium one. So I have. A barrel aged spiced rum, so it's like a it's a nice 
mellowed uh, rum that is then infused with natural flavors. And then we have a barrel-aged coconut rum, same thing. Barrel aged for six months. The spice ones aged for a year and a half. A barrel aged for six months on the on the coconut rum, and then infused with natural flavors, so that it's a it basically for anyone who likes rum, it is a grown up version. It is a more um, premium uh, version of that, and that is what I prefer to drink. I love that. I'll have to get some. So I so rum was the drink I'm, that I'm, I'm really, not in Pennsylvania. Are you in Pennsylvania or, or South Jersey? Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah. You can get it in Jersey. Okay. But Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, you know, the whole alcohol board thing, it's really tough to crack. And we go through, we, we present to them every year, and, they, and their answer is always, we have enough rums. And so you have to wait another year to go through the whole process and have a lobbyist and all this kind of stuff. It's a really fun process. Thank you, Pennsylvania. Yeah, well, I'll be in New Jersey tomorrow, so I'll get yeah. some tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so all, all good. I'll definitely pick some up. because So rum used to be the drink that, like, if I smelled it, I'd get sick because that's what was, like, you know, 19, 20 years old. Uh, yeah, and sure. then I just recently had rum again, and I was like, oh, I can drink it again. There's a, a local rum distillery here in Reading, and I was like, okay. this is actually really good. So I'll have to give yeah, it a whirl. Try, try the spiced rum. Um, great on its own, great with Coke. Um, I like it with uh, cider in the fall. Yeah. Tastes, tastes like fall to me or Christmas. Awesome. Very, very cool. I don't even know how many I've asked you so far. I think only two. What, yeah. what has been your favorite place to travel? The world. I love the world. Have you been there? <laughs> uh, I, I couldn't. I, I, I've calculated that I've been to 65 countries, and they they all were just amazing experiences. I love to travel, and I just love going to someplace new. Um, I always like to sort of trans be transported to some place that's foreign to me, and just take it in and just sort of live in that in, in that moment. So I couldn't give like a specific answer because there's so many places. Um, although I do love, this is not really douchey, but I do love um, uh, the south of France in spring. <laughs> so, you know, that's good. <laughs> I also love Italy, so, but, uh, but I, I, wouldn't, I couldn't pick one place. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, at the end of your life, if you could only be remembered for one sentence, what would it be? Um, man, he was smart, funny, genuine, intelligent, and awesome. How's that? And perfect. It was actually a great response. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a perfect well, some, response. Sometimes I want people to say, like, you know, it's like, man, he is just, oh, man, he's just, some, he's tough to take sometimes, but, I, you know, he's a smart dude. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Whatever. That's it. And, and so if anybody ever calls me smart, I, like, write it down. I'm like, on this date, <laughs> at this time, yeah. I'm taking it. Call me smart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And obviously, this, this podcast is called The Growth Now Movement, so I wrap up every single episode with this one question, and that is, in your life, what has been your biggest moment of growth? Failure. Hmm. Failure. Yeah. I've, I've, I've failed so many times at so many things, um, and you're left to um, figure out why you failed and analyze it and really reflect on yourself because, you know, I think when we're younger, you know, some people still do when they're older, you want to blame uh, outside sources or, you know, or forces. And, uh, um, and, I would always just say the reason I failed was me. I, I, you know, I didn't see something. I didn't anticipate something. I overestimated the market. I, you know, and it, whether it's uh, making a, 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 a pilot for a TV show or whatever it is, you know, the reason it didn't work was my fault. So, so I'm, I'm going to do something again. Maybe not, maybe not the same thing, but I can apply the lessons learned to anything that I do. So, yeah, my, my successes are due to my failures. Awesome. Well, everybody listening, make sure you check out his Kickstarter. Uh, I think you'll get a discounted rate on the on the gear at that point, yeah. uh, and you'll yeah. get it you'll get it before anybody else. It's wonderful stuff. So make sure you go check that out. Again, link is in the comments or in the show notes. Uh, and then Zane, thank you so much, man. Fourth time is the charm. I'm glad to get you on here, <laughs> and uh, just this is a, t a ton of fun, and I just appreciate everything Likewise. you're doing. Likewise, we'll connect on email. I want to connect you with some people, and uh, and now I'm I'm a subscriber to your show. So thanks, man. I appreciate awesome. it. Thanks.